You never quite know where you might find an amazing old artifact. There could be one hidden in a box in your basement. Perhaps there's one buried in your backyard or hidden by the mud on the banks of the nearest river. Amazing finds from the past could be literally anywhere, and whenever they're found, they make for wonderful stories. Let's hear some of those stories now. We'll begin with a story for the fashion lovers out there. In April 2022, Connor Hildebrandt paid a visit to his grandmother Beth in Toronto, Canada. While he was there, he decided to take a look through her basement, which is where he found this stunning 120-year-old Louis Vuitton trunk. An astonished Connor asked his grandmother about the trunk, but she knew very little about it, other than that she thought it may have belonged to her own grandmother many years earlier. The item is currently known as a steamer trunk, and would have been handmade at the manufacturer's headquarters in Paris, France. Trunks like this are known to have been sold in France and England, but there are no records of one ever being exported to the United States of America or Canada. How it ended up in Toronto is a total mystery. To Connor's delight, the trunk is still in excellent condition and has minimal wear and tear. A luggage slip still attached to the case suggests it was last used outside the house in 1896. Beth had no idea it was valuable and had spent the past two decades using it to store old sewing equipment. Archaeologists and police officers had to work together to safeguard our next discovery, which is a story that comes from Turkey in 2018. The artifact in question is a priceless 800-year-old Hebrew book which had found its way onto the black market and was about to be sold illegally in Diyarbakir, southeastern Turkey. The medieval tome, which is covered in religious illustrations and comprises 22 leather pages, is in a delicate condition and was immediately placed under state protection. This is one of the thousands of anti-smuggling operations that police in Turkey carry out every year. It's a nation with a rich cultural heritage and thousands of years of history, home to around 3,000 ancient cities built by 42 different civilizations. The country's history plays a big role in attracting international tourists, so the authorities don't take kindly to people trying to steal or traffic pieces of it. The title and text of the ancient book haven't been released to the public, but it would be safe to assume that it's religious in nature. Hopefully, it will one day find its way to a museum. Today, we mostly associate tea drinking with the British, although it was actually the Chinese who came up with the concept of brewing and drinking tea. It's not typically an American habit, and yet the history of drinking tea in America may go back much further than most people imagine it might. In 2012, archaeologists confirmed the discovery of a few ceramic mugs just outside St. Louis. One of those mugs contained traces of tea that was brewed 900 years earlier. The mugs were discovered within the perimeter of what was once the ancient city of Cahokia in Missouri. While calling the liquid inside the cup in question tea might be stretching the definition, it was a black liquid with high caffeine concentration and it wasn't coffee. This liquid may have been what European colonists wrote of in the 17th century when they said they'd observed native people perform a ritual involving large volumes of something called black drink, after which they danced and then vomited. This 2012 discovery is the first evidence that the black drink of legend was real. If it was used in rituals, it was every bit as important to Native Americans as a cup of Starbucks in the morning is important to American office workers today. Back in summer 2020, forest ranger Greg Franchick was going about his duties in the Sierra Mountains of California, USA, when he found what can only be described as a treasure trove of ancient fossils. They range from the spectacular to the bizarre. On the spectacular end of the scale is the entire skeleton of an ancient mastodon, excellently preserved and in near perfect condition. From the bizarre end, we have the bones of a gigantic salmon that must have weighed 400 pounds when it was alive. Greg quickly summoned expert paleontologists to the area. They went on to discover more than 600 petrified trees, a prehistoric camel the size of a giraffe, 
and an ancestor of the elephant that was previously unknown to science. Scientists believe all of the discoveries to be in the region of 10 million years old. From the information available at the site of the finds, experts now believe that the drainage area of the Mokelumna River was once an oak forest surrounded by open water. It's unlikely that all of the animals lived here. Instead, their remains were probably carried to this location by floods or volcanic debris. The landscape of California must have looked very different back then. We're heading back to China for our next find. It's an unusual octagon shape that was built in Yangquan some 700 years ago. And the murals painted onto its walls tells some troubling tales. The tomb's pyramid-shaped roof is covered in pictures of the sun, moon, and stars, all fairly normal for their era. But one of the wall murals tells the story of parents attempting to bury their child alive. The other murals are curious because they depict people wearing Mongol clothing as opposed to the traditional Chinese clothing of the era. It's possible that the child-burying scene isn't as sinister as it first appears. There's an ancient Chinese legend about a man named Guo Zhu. He and his wife care for their child and for Zhu's mother, who is unwell. They have insufficient money and food to provide for both, so they opt to bury the child and save the mother. In return for this apparent good deed, the gods reward them with the discovery of gold coins when they try to dig a well to provide water. Now they're rich, so they dig their son back up and live happily ever after. What a bizarre legend! The history of the great Danish city of Copenhagen had to be rewritten after this next discovery, which was made in 2018. Directly beneath City Hall Square, archaeologists have discovered an ancient burial ground containing the remains of 20 men, women, and children. All of them were laid to rest around 1,000 years ago. That means they predate the founding of the city of Copenhagen. The city's official history says it was founded by Bishop Absalon in 1160, after being gifted land by King Valdemar. Prior to this, the area is supposed to have been unoccupied. A further 10 bodies have been found beneath the original 20 since 2018 and archaeologists suspect that there are even more hidden beneath. It may still be true that there was no concept of Copenhagen before the bishop built his first castle here, but there were obviously people here prior to his arrival. Tantalizingly, the archaeologists who are still at the site in 2021 believe that they might now have identified the remains of an old stone building, perhaps a church, close to the human remains. The real story of the first occupants of Copenhagen might finally be told later this year. The subway lines beneath the Brazilian city of Rio de Janeiro are currently being expanded. That process means digging into earth that hasn't been disturbed for centuries, and it's resulted in some surprising discoveries. One of them is a tiny ivory toothbrush that's thought to have belonged to Emperor Pedro II. Another is a type of minty toothpaste that's believed to have been formulated for a Portuguese queen. More than 200,000 discoveries have been made thus far, almost all of which come from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Curiously, a substantial number of the artifacts have royal or aristocratic connections. There's even an ornate water bottle with the words, to the royal family, engraved on the side. Archaeologists were initially puzzled by the raft of royal discoveries because this part of the city used to be a slaughterhouse. That's the last place you'd expect to find objects like this. They now think they have an explanation. There's a formal imperial palace not far from the site of the digging, and it seems that the palace's occupants used this part of the city as a landfill without telling anybody. The subway workers have been digging through royal trash. Many of the residents of Karachi, Pakistan, believe that the Chwakandi tubes are haunted. That's an interesting prospect, but this necropolis doesn't need ghost stories to make it interesting. It's already one of the most stunning sandstone buildings in the world. It took three centuries to finish making and carving these structures, with work beginning in the 15th century and ending in the 18th. You might expect something a little bigger after 300 years of work, 
but pay attention to the intricacy and detail of the engravings and patterns on the sides of the sandstone blocks. There's no way to rush that kind of work. It takes as long as it takes. As for the ghost stories, even tour guides who rely on showing people around the tombs to earn a living aren't willing to approach the necropolis after the sun goes down. We agree with that advice, but not because the tombs are haunted. It's just that if you visited them in the darkness, you'd never get to see the spectacular scenes carved into the stone, and that would be a terrible waste. We can't talk about stunning examples of stone carving without giving a shout out to the Yungang Grottoes. They're an outstanding testimony to the devotion of ancient Buddhists. You'll find them at the foot of the Wushu Mountains, not far from Daitong City in China. The site consists of 45 separate caves, containing more than 50,000 stone statues, ranging in height from a few inches, to a statue of the Buddha that stands an incredible 60 feet tall. It took from the year 460 to the year 525 to complete the grottoes. Right at the core of them are the ruins of an ancient castle, complete with its defensive walls and a beacon tower. It's thought that it took the work of more than 40,000 people to complete the project, most of whom came from Sri Lanka and belonged to the Toba culture. They recruited a further 3,000 Buddhist monks along the Silk Road on their way to China, aiming to turn Buddhism into the state religion. They were successful in their mission, and the grottos they built were recognized as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 2001. Everyone's heard the tale of the lost city of Atlantis, said to have sunk beneath the waves in ancient times never to be seen again. The city has never been found, despite many claims to the contrary. One of the most recent claims is that this enormous treasure hoard, discovered at an ancient Minoan-era site in Crete, is connected to the legend. The precious artifacts were discovered on the tiny islet of Chrysi, Archaeologists say that the people who lived here around 3,800 years ago were so sophisticated that they even built stone tanks to cultivate marine species. There are also several examples of murex shells used in the production of a purple dye associated with royalty in the ancient world. Adding to the impression that this land once belonged to a wealthy, advanced culture is the discovery of golden jewelry, including beads, rings, and bracelets. As for the connection to Atlantis, many modern historians believe that the true Atlantis was Crete itself, and that the tale of a mighty city crashing into the sea is simply a metaphor for the collapse of Minoan civilization after an enormous volcanic eruption. There are many ancient temples and wonders to be found in Peru, but this next discovery is among the very oldest of them. It's the Templo de las Manos Cruzadas in Katoche. The name translates into English as the Temple of the Crossed Hands. With an age of approximately 4,000 years, this is not only one of the oldest temples in Peru, but in all of the Americas. It might have been the work of the Katoche Wairajika culture, but not everyone agrees with that assessment because their culture isn't thought to have emerged until around 2,000 years after the temple was built. The temple is little more than a ruin today, but even in its ruined state, its most famous features are clearly visible. Stone carvings of crossed hands repeatedly appear on the remaining walls of the temple, and nobody knows why. The symbol presumably had a specific meaning to the people who came to this place to worship, but we don't know what they were worshiping or why it involved crossing their hands. Perhaps this was their equivalent of clasping your hands in prayer. Let's go from one mysterious ancient culture to another, a people who have been nicknamed the Masters of the Desert. We're talking about the Hokoham people, who built enormous Kalish structures and irrigation canals in the deserts of Arizona, USA, hundreds of years ago. The 13th century site is in the Gila River Valley just outside Coolidge and is dominated by the ruins of the four-story watchtower known as the Casa Grande. It's almost 40 feet tall and made of more than 3,000 tons of Kalish piled up in layers. 
The openings in its crumbling walls are designed to align with the positions of the sun and moon at important times of the year. The pine, fir, and juniper beams that once supported the roof came from trees imported from over 50 miles away. Why these trees were used rather than the local desert trees is unknown. Perhaps they had something to do with what went on inside the building. But sadly, we don't know much about that either. That's the most frustrating thing about archaeology. Sometimes you have to accept that you'll never know the full story. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.